How's it going everybody? My name is Rinsler here back again for another video and welcome back to my Kids Backyard Wrestling Career Series. And today we're going to be picking up the series with Pac-Man, a significant fan favorite of KBW's mid-card in my opinion, who should have been a World Heavyweight Champion, it should have been the last World Heavyweight Champion to be exact. But overall, he had a great career, and, I would, and I'm dying to talk to him about you guys. I've been putting off my Pac-Man video for a while because I've been doing the Batman series at the same time, and I've honestly been having a lot of fun doing the Batman videos. So that's why my KBW videos haven't been as consistent as they were. So anyway, that's why it's taken me so long to make a video on Pac-Man. I wanted to make a video on Pac-Man at least a month ago. But better late than never, without further, without further ado, sorry, let's talk about Pac-Man. Pac-Man first debuted for KBW in the second Money in the Bank Liar match at Bloodthirsty in Season 2. This match has tragically been deleted for unknown reasons, which sucks as this was a star-making performance for Pac-Man, and it was a strong teaser for what fans could expect from the mid-card division in Season 3. So unique and talented was Pac-Man that KBW rightfully saw fit to have him return for Season 3. Early on, it was clear that Pac-Man was becoming the next big popular mid-carder in KBW, alongside guys like D-Man and the Bomba Kid. His video game-themed gimmick could have died on its ass, but it ended up really working out for him. He even named his finishing moves on video game names, such as the Cheat Code, Extra Life, and Game Over. He was also one of the first KBW wrestlers to become social media aware, as he became quite popular on Twitter and helped KBW's popularity grow further as a result. Pac-Man's first singles match in KBW was against AK-47, which he surprisingly won after CJ's music hit, distracting AK, allowing Pac-Man to get a roll-up victory. Soon afterwards, Cage set up a voting poll on the KBW Facebook page to decide who would face him for the Undisputed Championship in his first match back from injury. Pac-Man won the vote by a landslide, which goes to show how popular Pac-Man was already becoming with the fans. Funny thing is that during the pre-match backstage segment between Cage and Pac-Man, Pac-Man punched Cage in the face but seemed shocked by himself after he'd done it. It seems like Pac-Man hit Cage harder than they'd planned and I thought it was really funny. Anyways, Pac-Man and Cage had put on instant classic of a match which Pac-Man actually won after hitting a game over on a steel chair, capturing the undisputed title in the process. Considering Paul Wall, Cage, and AK-47 had all been former holders of this title, I think that it's fair enough to say that Cage, who is the founder and owner of KBW at the time, that he that Pac-Man had earned Cage's confidence as a star. Pac-Man then teamed up with the Bama Kid to unsuccessfully attempt to capture the tag team titles from Mick the Brick and T-Rex. He then competed in the Royal Rumble match, where, where he embarrassingly lost his balance after doing a move and eliminated himself from the match. This, in my opinion, was the absolute funniest thing that ever happened in all of Season 3. And while I don't know for sure if it was planned or not, if it wasn't planned, I can only imagine how embarrassed Pac-Man must have been. Luckily, this botch wouldn't come to define him, and most people have probably forgotten about this moment. Well, at least until I brought it up again. Sorry, Pac-Man. Anyways, at Renegade Revolution, Pac-Man defended his undisputed title against the Beast and the Bulldozer in a triple threat match. Bulldozer had the match won, but then he placed Pac-Man on Beast's prone body, allowing him to retain the title. Bulldozer explained that he felt the undisputed title was beneath him and that it wasn't a prize worth fighting for a former world champion like him. However, Cage would soon after force him to fight again one-on-one -on -one for the title with Pac-Man this time. Pac-Man would then attempt to join Team KBW at All or Nothing by facing Cage in a false count anywhere qualifying match. In my opinion, this was Pac-Man's best singles match of his entire career. There were some truly nasty looking spots during this match, and it's honestly a miracle that nobody got seriously injured. And, but in the end, Pac-Man failed to qualify. He would then get a second chance to qualify in a fatal five-way match for the Native American title, but would lose to D-Man. Pac-Man wouldn't be left off the card of All or Nothing entirely though, as he competed in un in an unannounced fatal four-way to determine the number one contender for the undisputed title, but lost the match to Jacob Storm. Pac-Man would then be placed in a dream match of sorts against Paul Wall, who had been gone from KBW since season two. Thus, this was the first time these two had ever been in the ring together. Disappointingly, this match was only a few minutes long before Paul defeated Pac-Man. These two guys are so talented that it's a real shame they didn't get more time in the ring, because they could, they could have put a match for the ages in my opinion. 
Pac-Man would then reunite with Bomb and Kid to challenge the Ultimate Underdogs, the Renegades, and the Enforcement in a fatal four-way TLC match at Blood, Sweat, and Tears for the tag team titles. In my personal opinion, this was KBW's greatest tag team style match that they ever did. In the end, though, Bomb and Kid and Pac-Man shockingly won the tag, the tag team titles. In Season 4, despite Pac-Man being a tag team champion, he and Bama Kid kind of went their separate ways and Pac-Man more often competed in singles matches, which I thought was kind of weird. He then had another dream match of sorts against up-and-coming high flyer Major Brown, which was given the proper time to be a great match in my opinion. After this match, Pac-Man competed in the third Money in the Bank ladder match at Bloodthirsty 2, going on to actually win the match. In my opinion, it was poetic of sorts for Pac-Man to win the same type of match that he debuted in a year before. Pac-Man would then have an underrated match against Pitbull of the Enforcement before being assaulted post-match by AK-47, which rode him off camera with injury. I can't presume to know why Pac-Man left KBW in Season 4, but it must have been something personal going on in his life. Due to this injury, Bama Kid and him were forced to vacate the tag team titles. Pac-Man actually wouldn't return until the very last match in Season 5 at Blood, Sweat, and Tears 2, cashing in his Money in the Bank contract to insert himself into the final world title match against Big Time Mike, Cage, and AK-47. In the end, though, Pac-Man would disappointingly fail to win the gold. Pac-Man's last match was last year when he faced Bomb Kid one-on-one in a losing effort. This match was supposed to be a teaser of sorts for a full-on Season 6, but no news has come a year later about whether Season 6 is on or not. In my opinion, Pac-Man always felt like a future world champion, and KBW had the opportunity to make him their last champion after heroically returning from injury, and they didn't take that opportunity, which I think I'd consider KBW's biggest booking mistake in their entire history, since he absolutely deserved the honor of being their last world champion, in my opinion. Anyways, guys, that was the career of Pac-Man. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up. Share this video with all of your friends on all of your various social media platforms. Ring that notification bell. And uh, let me know in the comments down below what you liked and didn't like about this video. And I will see all you dudes and chicks in the next video.